Good morning, good morning. It's time for Thriving Thursdays. I'm your host, Marquise Martin Hayes. It is my honor and privilege to come to you again and connect and empower you with tools, tips, tricks, strategies that you can employ so that you can live a life without excuse. Today, my guest is Sarah J. Stevens. She'll be on with us in just a moment. But if you saw the show notes in advance or the ad for it, She's like top realtor in so many categories, an award-winning realtor across Canada. So I can't wait to bring her to you. But before we do that, as always, I like to talk about my skin just a little bit. Rodan and Fields, I am a skin consultant with them, a very proud skin consultant, a man who has found his niche as it relates to skin. Beforehand, like I've told you guys many times before, witch hazel is all I used. But now... I'm actually cleaning my face, God, believe it or not, using a toner to keep it tight and right because at 47, I am aging. My skin is getting a little bit weaker, but by taking care of it and nurturing it, I'll last well, well, much longer than the average person. I enjoy it for a couple of different reasons. Number one, my skin actually does look better. It breathes and it actually feels better. I have a toner, which I didn't even know anything about, as I've told you many times before. But it keeping my skin tight and helping my pores close after they cleanse and not become clogged has allowed, you know, when I want to grow my scruff, it kicks right in without having ingrown hairs. And that has made a tremendous difference for me because I'm the guy who used to carry tweezers around all the time trying to just make sure I didn't have ingrown hairs. But since I've been cleansing my skin with Rodan and Fields, I haven't had it. One of the primary reasons is not only the toner but also my moisturizers. I actually have a moisturizer for the morning that has an SPF in it to help keep my skin bright and help keep my skin open and help keep my skin fresh. But I also have one in the evening. When I wash at night, it helps repair my skin overnight. So Rodan and Fields, I'm having a great time. Also, for those of you who are looking to start a small business, if you're interested in jumping into skincare, let's have a conversation. All right, without further ado, Let's get to the show. Again, Sarah J. Stevens, I met Sarah. Her and I were working on or practicing on a platform in Facebook, a group on Facebook on the Michelle Soro, where we were practicing going live. And I I listened to her talk. I listened to her express her passion over and over again. And then we went into a class together, a training together with my friend Giordani McCoy where we were all being trained by Michelle. And I would listen to Sarah, her passion, her tenacity. I was so impressed with who she is as a woman. It blew me away. I didn't even know all the amazing real estate things. I'd heard a little bit here, a little bit there. But when I meet people, I don't care about what you do. I want to feel your spirit and who you are. Sarah was very impressive. And it wasn't until recently that I learned about how impressive that shows up in the world for her. So. Let's bring Sarah on to join the show. Good morning, my friend. Hi, Marquise. How are you? Thank you so much for having me in today. So great to see you. I'm so glad to have you. Now, I don't know. Could you hear what I was saying about you in the green room? I could. And you know what? Thank you for the kind words. Um, I, <laughs> I, you know, I, I just I appreciate everything. And, uh, you know, thank you for sharing that. I, I like how you show up authentically as well and with all of your enthusiasm. And so uh, I think that's why we connected right away. <laughs> Yep, exactly. Right. The spirits kick in. And so as I explained on the show, all I want to do is just empower people. And and for me, that's why the titles don't matter. Right. Like they just they don't. It's who are you? How are you living? Not how much money you have, not what's your title or position, because those things can be very, very, very deceiving, as we see all around our country right now. True. And so. Who you are is why I asked you to come on. I'm so glad you allowed me that this opportunity. So thank you. On the flip side of that, there is all the titles and things that our shallow minds know that things we aspire to do and become that does matter, that does influence us, that people I had one of my friends reached out to me this morning. What time is the show starting? I want to join. Like she's also in real estate. I totally forgot, but she's eager to hear about some of your accomplishments. So Maybe we can start the show there. You can talk about all the things that draw people to you, and then we can get behind the scenes about how you got there, 
who you are and your values. Sure. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you again for the intro. Uh, I really appreciate your kind words. And, uh, you know, I am fortunate, right? I'm grateful. I've had a lot of success. But, uh, you know, as you allude to, we have to start, you know, with who we are and, yeah. and build out what our path is, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, part of that is, uh, you know, goal setting. And part of it is uh, right place, right time. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then part of it is just consistency. And, um, you know, from my side, it, it's true. I mean, I do have some um, good credentials behind me and some good accomplishments, uh, as you alluded to. I, you know, I hate talking about myself. Is that terrible? I know. So, so far, <laughs> right now, I was like, oh, she's not going down that road. No. We were just about to play about that big. And I was about yeah. to say, absolutely not. Give yeah. it to us. Give it. Okay. Think of it this way. Talk about the awards, but how, from, from the perspective of how other people see it. Like, mm-hmm. you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. And 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 this because this this show really is, and I told you that yesterday. I want to brag on you, and so the biggest version of you, which I know you're already present. I'm not worried about that. But like, give it to us. Give us the accolades. Give us those things because those are the things that open the door for yeah. everybody to come in and listen to everything else we want to say. Fair enough. So I will uh, I will step out. Right, I'll come out of my shell here for you, Marquise. Um, you know what I what I would say is. Uh, Achieving that top 4% in Canada as a real estate agent was a, a huge accomplishment. But I think the, for me, the biggest, uh, most profound experience was, uh, you know, being called up by Canadian Real Estate Wealth, uh, them asking to interview me and feature me as an investor. Uh, Canadian Real Estate Wealth is the number one real estate investment magazine in Canada. Uh, and then after that going so well and me sharing uh, some of my success in my real estate investment portfolio, uh, they asked me to come back and write an article for them. And then they asked me to come back and write another article. And so, you know, for me, that was a real, uh, it's fun, right? And, you know, when I think about how did I make that all happen? uh, On one of the trips, when I was writing an article, we were in Myrtle Beach, uh, in the US with my kids and family. And I said, like, I got to get this, I have to do this article. But normally, you know, day to day, it's tough, you know, when you've got schedules and things going on uh, to sit down and write the article. So I wrote the article in Myrtle Beach. The next article, I happen to be in the Philippines. <laughs> and again, said to my family, I've got to stay back. You know, you guys go on the day trip. I have to stay back and, and write this article. Anyway, you know, the benefit for me is, you know, I wasn't getting paid for writing those articles. Okay. Genuinely, I wanted to share my experience, my insight, um, you know, help guide people and coach them. And for me, you know, I have a phys ed degree. Uh, that's my undergraduate degree. I also have an MBA, but... I have a phys ed degree. So at heart, I love, you know, working with teams and helping people and coaching them. Yeah. And just because I've been successful in real estate, I still love to bring that back. Right. I still love to, you know, inspire people and not only inspire them, though, but I love to have them accomplish, you know, get those results. Right. Yeah. So that then we can say, OK, good. We got the next step. Where do we go from here and uh, and how to build it? So. Maybe that does that share a little bit uh, with you without no. me carrying on too much. <laughs> no, you, no. See, the thing is, you are supposed to carry on too much today. So, bring. It. <laughs> All right, tell us in a nutshell. Can you hit each one of the awards and what they mean? Just like a sure. minute or less. You don't have to absolutely. Have to, yeah, so, really understanding of it. Absolutely. Um, you know, through that Canadian Real Estate Wealth and you know the Investor Forum, I was actually named finalist for top multifamily investing in Canada. Uh, that ties back to, you know, my spouse and I, we own a few apartment buildings uh, so that, you know, we've been acknowledged as top investors in Canada. Uh, I was also nominated for the RBC Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Uh, and that's a, you know, a female uh, led award uh, three years in a row. Uh, it's a very competitive award. I would love to win it one day. But of course, there's amazing people that uh, secure that award annually. So just to be nominated was a huge uh, win for me. Uh, and also, you know, being a, a century, you can see my statues. I have gold statues yeah, behind me. Uh, really cool. <laughs> they look fancy, so I'm not uh, famous in that way. But um, those awards are just acknowledged that I'm top 4% in Canada for Century 21. Uh, I do have my real estate license. So um, that's been a, that was a key one for me to try and achieve that. You know, my children were small. Um, yeah when I was, you know, working in real estate initially. And so that's, that's a big one. My kids, you know, they saw me win one and they said, will you get another? And so I have twins. Oh, so I said, okay, wow. I'll, I'll try, I'll try hard to win another one. And then when yeah. I got the second one, they said, well, are you going to get a third? <laughs> they said, I don't know. Like this, you know, yeah. it's a challenging award to win, you know, yeah. you start yeah. at zero every January 1st. So you have to yeah. build that back up. 
Yeah. So I'll have another one on the way for 2020. And so they keep asking me now they're saying you need to get a double. <laughs> oh my God. Double. You know, my son gave me, it's so fun. He, um, he was laying on his bed one night. He said, mom, do you think you'll win the grand century on? And I said, I don't know. That's a pretty, that's a pretty hefty uh, award to, um, yeah. you know, to be in that uh, top echelon. And yeah. being already in the top four percent, uh, you know, I'm I'm happy with that. Ooh, in Canada, said, mom, I know you can win it. And he gave me this this you cool. know, kind speech, you know, as he lay on his bed and said, "Mom, I know you can do it. I know you'll do it at least once in your lifetime." So that's something that I'm working on even for 2021. That's how my kids uh, inspire me uh, to try and level up. So. so all right, we so all right. So then I was going to save it, but let's see where it goes. Tell us about that. How as Jeez, you have so many amazing things going. All right. When we talk about your kids and, and how your son responded and how he encouraged you and how busy you are, what are some of the things that you do to kind of stimulate that? Because, like, you know, a lot of moms who are, as we call them in, in the Chicago area, boss moms or boss chicks, yeah, yeah. really around the country, that, that, you know, with women having more power, or having the opportunity to really show up, which they should have had all along, but they have now. How do you balance that? How do you cultivate your children in a way that he comes out and says, hey, mom, you know what? I know you're going to win one at least at least once in your lifetime. I mean, he didn't come up with this whole, I know you're the best and you're going to do it. I mean, it's that sounded grounded. Yeah. How do you what are some of the things that you do and how do you balance that? Yeah, I think that's a it's a fair question, Marquise. And I it's been a challenge, right, for most women, you know, especially yeah. when you have children, right? Um, during mm -hmm. this pandemic, you know, as uh, literally in my area, we just went back into another extended lockdown. It's a stay home order. We're not allowed to leave our houses, basically. Um, so it's been a challenging year overall. Never mind when you're trying to run a business. Uh, now we've got, you know, I've got kids at home. So I'm, I'm a full-time professor. So I teach college courses, right? I'm a, an award-winning realtor, so I have a full-time real estate wow. business. Like I'm in this full-time. You know, yeah. we have investment properties, and we do hire out and contract it. I mean, to save myself two hours today, I even just called up a colleague and said, "Hey, can you run do an errand for me? You know, I'll pay you this much money." And she's like, "No problem." She came to my house. You know, take care of it. So part of it is networking. You know, okay. um, and delegating. Part, and delegating, right? Yeah. And I think that that's where we can. Right where we can, right, and right. and I feel fortunate that I'm in that position that I you know have access to that. Before I used to you know just work long long days, and I know that there's probably some of you out there doing that right to make yeah. it happen to get to the next level. But you know, for my kids, I try and involve them. You know, I'll give you an example just from today. You know, they're up early. Um, I've got a real estate deal that's closing today, so I've been on you know on a call with the broker that runs our nine organizations, uh, talking about a, a challenge that we're having with one area. My clients called me and said, "Sarah, you're the best! Like I just love you so much. You sent that email, and you're an expert in this, and you're calling another expert to just make sure that this goes right." And mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that's part of it, right? So um, my kids were up early; they started doing their schoolwork because they like to get it done. I literally had to go out and get a bank draft for something. They got in the car with me. You know, so I just tell them, hey, this is the plan for the day, right? You're going to have to help me out here. How am I on this call right now when they're home? <laughs> I said, you know what, guys, I'm going to let you watch TV for an hour. And they said, you are because we have a rule. No TV during the week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what's up. It's a school day. They're supposed to be, you know, in school. They've yeah. done a lot of their work. So they're watching a show down the hall. Uh, I said, here's your lunch boxes, eat your lunch, please don't fight, don't get hurt, and please don't interrupt. And so, and they understand, right? I mean, they're eight, right? I've got twins that are eight. It's yeah. tough when they're younger, but, you know, they start to understand and they start to understand, you know, they said, what's going on with this? And so we, you know, we share that information with them. You know, we educate them. When my son says, you know, how much is this house or how much is this mortgage? I tell them, you so, know, I, good. Yeah. So they're involved in this yes. conversation because yes. You're saying you have a couple of things that I really want to hit because I sure. love where you're going. I hate to interrupt, but you you mentioned they don't watch TV during the week, yet yeah. you're as busy as you are. And so sometimes it, I know parents aren't necessarily fans of TV, but it's like, how am I going to get my things done? How do you how do you manage that during the week with them? And then please come back to where you were leading also. But how do you manage that during the week? Like, what's it like? It's um. You know, it's a it's a choice and it's kind of the rules that we have over the, the holiday period. I mean, we celebrate Christmas in our house. And so we 
you know, we had the holiday period and they were allowed to watch TV in the morning when they woke up for an hour and they were allowed to, we usually watched a movie or something in the afternoon or in the evening, mm -hmm. but that was during the, the holidays, right? right? But we're back to a school routine. And for us, our kids don't operate well with, you know, having, for example, sugar or watching TV. It just, it doesn't work for them. It makes the day worse for them. So we just, you know, we just set the expectation. And so what do they do? They play with each other. They play on their own. They color, they do their schoolwork. Uh, if they want, they can come in my office. They sit on my lap. We look up houses or they hear the phone calls with the lawyer. I mean, I don't mind. I just, you know, I tell whoever I'm on the phone with, hey, you know, my son might be in the room or my daughter or whatever. So, you know, that they know. But at the same cool. time, it's not like the kids are out there telling anybody anything either. They just sure, so yeah. they're involved. They're around. And I, you know, they just they want to come in. And th again, this is more pandemic based, right? Sure, yeah. they be in school. Um, but you know, at this time we've got to adapt. And I think that that's something that all of us are, you know, are handling in our own ways, yeah. right. Based yeah. on what works for our family. So, you know, you said that's how we have to adapt. And I think the problem that you just solved is we don't teach our children to adapt at an early enough age yet. We expect them to when they're older, but right. what you're cultivating is adaptation as they're expanding and growing up. So they're going to know about real estate, how it functions, and probably be brokering deals when they're in high school because well, they can see and they have an eye for it. That would I would love that, right? Of course, I never want to push them into what I would love no, them to yeah. experience. You know, from my side, you know, why do I work on these things? I want to build a legacy for them, but also something that they can uh, move into, right? As we look at, you know, where are jobs? How do people get paid, et cetera? I, you know. Right. If they want to work in our company and work for us, you know, they can apply. Uh, they have to show us that they, you know, have the capability, capacity, and also the interest to do it. But I mean, they know also how they can make money around the house. So, you know, I only pay them for things that save me time in my business. So they still have mm -hmm. to do other chores and work, but I don't pay them for that because I don't get paid. You know, that's good that. parenting, woman. Well, thank you, but. <laughs> I like that because, you know, yeah. I, you know, I, I have Melania is the youngest. She's 15 now. So it's not so much of a concern. But yeah. the struggle was, how do I like I don't want to pay you for chores. You live here, too. But exactly. you pay them for the work they do in the business, which is very yeah. distinctly different. And Melania, which is really cool. When I when I had the bar, she when she was available, Dad, can I go to the bar with you? I'll 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 take the money. I'll serve the customers. I'll run the counter. And she was excellent. I didn't catch it, but she was earning in the way you just described. And that's just another great, that's just wisdom. That's just wisdom. And it's experience, right? And, and it allows them to see how are ways that we can earn money. So if they want to earn money and sometimes they decide they want to buy something, I say, well, you have to work to earn the money. So then they'll come in my office and say, can I shred the papers? Can I, you know, and they, they know all their jobs. Can I fill the paper in the printers? Can I, we have uh, some laundry at our apartment building. So we have bags of coins and so they can roll the change right that's and then i pay them based on what they you know and so that's just like little things that they can do but also you know we um this year we purchased their one of their grandmothers uh, passed away my spouse my mother-in-law um and she passed away and she left them a bit of money and so we said to them we actually sat them down and said look lola left you some money so you know of course their their eyes light up like what could we do with it and we said yeah. look you could either buy something like toys and whatever, and the, the money will be spent, or we could invest it in this rental property and you can own, you can each own 21%. Mm -hmm. We'll structure it through one of our companies. So it's, you know, we had to work with our lawyer account, et cetera, to structure it all, but that's mm -hmm. fine. Those are the details behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah. But that way Lola's money will continue to grow. Yeah. You will have a part in this business. So they know it's, they say it, it's our house, right? Like, is it our Airbnb? And they will go and work in the Airbnb too. Now, of course, we're not taking them out of school to do the cleaning, but sure, yeah. on the weekends, they went on Christmas Eve to clean the Airbnb and we pay them. Like they do yeah. get paid, not the full cleaning amount, right? Right, right, right. The kids, but they get paid and they do a really good job. They know what the expectations are. They show wow. up. They do the work, they get paid and they're proud, you know? And they said, well, why yeah. do you have to go clean on Christmas Eve? And I said, look, that's what happens when we run a business, right? Because even mm -hmm. then we're still, there's still some pushback. There's still mm -hmm. some- Yeah, there's still kids. Happen. Yeah, and I said, this is what happens. When you have a business, you gotta do the work on all the days when other people can't, right? Because right. we have cleaners as well, right? So it's not, we gotta balance things out. But when there's no cleaners, they're going out to clean the Airbnb. And so, you know, for them, it's it's learning about opportunity, how to make money, 
and, and start to plan and, and plant that seed. You know, when they said that they were willing and interested to put their money into this investment property, I mean, for me, that's like, it's working. You're listening, right? We'll see yeah. when they're 16, maybe. But, uh, you know, I'm hoping that these seeds that we plant now yeah. will carry through, right? Because then that yeah. money will help them pay for, um, you know, hopefully education down the road or, or whatever the next thing is, right? Yeah. They want to yeah. do. You know, you 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 know, you do you did something that my father used to do with me that I hope people really get. You sat down with them and said, Hey, listen, you can buy toys, or or like they not that they really had an option, but in their mind they had an option because you set them up in such a way that allowed them to see why one would be better, but still let them sort of choose. And yeah. and 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 that is critical. For creating productive citizens, they know the options, and yet they have a say in it. And and not only that, you then allow them to work as cleaners on the property that we own. I mean, Sarah, you've got to write a parenting book. It's something I've wanted to do for a very long time. But I love the pre because a lot of times we don't know what to do. Like we yeah. just know we're stressed probably because we're watching too much television, probably because we have too much sugar in our blood. And, yeah. and so it's causing us to be in disarray. Hmm. That's another conversation. Yeah. And I love that you're aware of those things and you're, cre you're, you're, you're saying for your children, I'm not going to allow these things because we've studied, we've been with them, we've watched them and they don't function well in that environment. And then you've cultivated this world of parenting and partnership partnership with your children so that you're likely going to have a lifelong relationship with them and be successful in business with them and carry it forward. I mean, wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. I mean, that's my hope. I mean, there's so young, I mean, there's so many years to go, but I just know when I look at other parents that have kids that are being successful, you know, I'm always, we're trying to do what we can you sure. know, every day to make sure that we're having that. And of course there's not, there's not always great days. I mean, I, you know, I yell at them. They know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. They're <But>, still kids. <laughs> yeah. They're still kids, you know? And uh, I joke with them one day, I said to somebody else, I said, it was a pretty good day. I only yelled at you guys once. Right. Cause they were there on the call and they said, yeah, you just yelled at us once, but it's okay. So, you know, I think wow. we have that, uh, you know, mutual respect and understanding. And, you know, even when we talk about choices that they're making, like, as I sit here, you'll, you'll probably laugh that I have this in my drawer. So I'm opening up my drawer. I but this is, uh, this is Ryan's money that she's given me. They're, they've invested it at 10% with me. So, so, and they keep working, making money, and then they in, come and invest it. And they say, I want to invest more of the money, you know, because wow. I explain to them how they can get a return on their money. So what I'm trying to teach them is that discipline of, um, you know, postponing instead of having that, you know, immediate need um, met right away. Right. Like, I want a toy or whatever. Right. You know, if you invest it in the end, you'll have more money for, you know, more things that you may want to purchase or, invest. you know, et cetera. The money grows and grows and grows. So um, anyhow, that's uh, that's a whole other uh, conversation too, but, but, it's, it's, but it's no, this who listen, we're talking to someone who has built in a system in their life so that their next generation, their lineage can carry it out. This is, this is, this is everything. Yeah. This is thriving. Like most of us don't know how to raise our kids. I'm not mm -hmm. even the best at raising my kids. I just happen to have a really great village around me, but this is critical. Mm -hmm. This, I love just the fact that they're so engaged in the everyday conversation. Yeah. I, you know, I don't have the opportunity, right? I, I remember watching on Amazon Prime, there's a mega yacht show, and I like boats, okay? So oh, I, okay, you, so you guys send me links because I love boats. I you love do? Boats. Oh okay. my God. I love what boats. kind of boat do you love? Tell me. What's that? What kind of boat do you love the most? Just tell me, like, what your dream boat is, or just tell me something about what you love about boats. So, what I love about boats, number one, power. I, yep. I haven't gotten into sailing quite you yet. You like the speed boat. Okay, so you like the Not full even boat. Speed boat. Not even okay. a speed boat. Okay. Speedboats. I haven't been on. I haven't been on a speedboat. I'm not sure I'll have that much fun. But okay. I want like a like a like a 48 to 60 somewhere in there. Enough where I might need. I need a co-captain, but I can yeah. take my family and friends, and we can just be together out in the middle of Lake Michigan, or when I get to California, out in the Pacific Ocean. Like I don't. And then I look at the mega yachts, and I'm like, I didn't know you could sell a used. People are buying used yachts for 46 million. I didn't, I, I stumbled across that. And I was just, my mouth just started salivating. I'm like, I got to move 
over by Greece where these things are so I can see them with my naked eye. Like I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still about that much into getting into them, but I know it's a thing for me. It, it is a, it is a thing for me. I was in Dubai in February. I was speaking okay. and, okay. um, and I saw Maggie Yachts literally with my own eyes. From yeah. And, and it's anyways, I had seen this video uh, or movie with Liam and uh, we were watching and he said, mom, why don't we have a mega yacht? I said, did you hear the numbers? I said, I don't have $186 billion or whatever it is for the oh, mega yacht. They were on right? three months off a year. <laughs> yeah. I said, so, so that's why we don't have one. You know, we do have a, a boat. It's a bow rider, water ski boat, whatever. So we do have a boat, but he said, why can't we have that? I said, look, in my lifetime, it's not possible for me to have one. I just, I said, it's not actually, I don't think it's possible. Okay. I said, but for you, it is. And I literally got out my financial cool. calculator, right? It's like $50, $40 financial calculator. People and I, listen. Go and, this, and I literally calculated for him. And that's why they're doing the investing too. Cause I think all these things keep coming back to them, right? They keep hearing it. So I said, you have the possibility to hit, you know, to be a billionaire in your lifetime you know, just with some of these easy things that we're doing, you don't have to, I said, if you have a, a business, you know, obviously having a business will take you there faster. You know, it's right. going to be difficult to have a job and save money and et cetera. Yeah. But yeah. If you come up with business concepts, et cetera, or even the real estate investing, you can be in that category. And so I think also from some of these things that we watch or see, um, that also puts them on that path, right? It's, you know, I want them to have choices. I, you know, I don't want them to work all the time. I don't work all the time either. Yeah. You no, know, I, we probably traveled. Uh, we went to Asia last year, um, <laughs> which is, you know, the irony of all this lockdown happening. You know, yeah. we got to go to the Philippines, you know, we stopped in Hong Kong um, mm -hmm. and also in uh, Korea, which is amazing to stop there as well and check things out. But, you know, it's fun to be able to travel. I play with the kids every day. Like, you know, we have Nerf yeah. gun rates or whatever. Anyways, it's, you got to fit it all. You fit in what you can and prioritize and then, also recognize yeah. not everything's going to get done. Well, I agree. But like, I love that you acknowledge, hey, listen, based on the schedule I'm on, it may not happen for me. But hold on, let me grab this calculator because for you, that's possible. And here's how, because it's easy. I was one of those parents. You can do anything. You can become anything. And I meant it. But there's a very distinct difference in pulling out the calculator and showing you how and stimulating the mind on how the steps to get there will work. As a matter of fact, I grew up, oh, I'm love. I love people. I just want to make the world better. I didn't care about money. I just want. And now I'm older. I'm like, wait a minute. That's all well and good. But if you don't have money, you don't have the opportunity to really do it the way you see doing it. You're just wishing great ideas on the planet. That yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. And so taking the time to work with our children to show them how it's going to happen is critical. As a matter of fact, I just had a conversation with Zion in college about she wants to just dance like the rest mm -hmm. of her life and travel, which is great. I'm like, but we need to figure out, we need to make sure we start having more conversations about how money makes money because otherwise that's not going to happen. Yes. Or if you twist your ankle, then what? Yeah. Right. So I love that you're bringing that out. I, I, I love, we're not even talking about budgeting. We're talking about how to make your dreams come true, which yes. is a very different conversation. Yes. We're, we're looking at it from like the opportunity, right? So yes. this is the opportunity. And then there's also, there's a system to get there. It's not, you don't yes. just have to wish upon a star, right? right. You, you actually can make this happen, which, you know, which is why they have the bags of money in my drawer. Exactly. <laughs> right? Because, you know, they're watching to see, okay, then I understand what she's saying. She's calculating it and they're putting that in place. You know, the other thing is, they, you know, they watch us as successful as we are, you know, my spouse and I, we started with nothing. Okay. Like major student loans, like, you know, the most embarrassing story I can share with you is that I bounced a rent check when I was in grad school for a hundred dollars. Oh. You know, my landlord called me up. Uh, this was in the summer because I was taking some summer school classes and staying yeah. at home. And uh, they said to me, your, your rent check bounced. So can you come in and give us another check? And I went in and I said, are you sure it bounced? And they said, yeah, because the office wasn't far from where I was living. Yeah. And I was, I was devastated because yeah. you know, 
for me to not have a hundred dollars in my bank account to pay, you know, yeah. it's my responsibility to pay for my housing. Right. I mean, yeah. we need food and we need shelter and that's really like fundamentally, that's what we need money for in our, you know, early days of life, no yeah. matter what, no matter what they didn't have a hundred dollars to pay for my rent. Mm -hmm. I mean, that really, um, yeah. it, it, you know, it set everything home for me, you know, and I, and that for me was a turning point that I decided I didn't want to be that person, you know, I had kind of a, a history of a couple of different things that happened or basically around a hundred dollars. And I, I decided, you know what, I'm going to change my life. I am not going to be broke. I'm not going to, you know, be short a hundred dollars ever again. Yeah. And so, you know, from there that almost set my trajectory. Right. And that, that was only when I was probably in my early twenties that, that I bounced yeah. that one check. You know, I became a millionaire when I was 35. So you can imagine from that moment, yes. right? I, know. Know. I didn't see, I didn't even know that. So like we got like a good 25 minutes or so. Okay. Dive into that world. Like I know you're going, I'm so I'm excited. Okay. I'm excited. I love it. Yeah, I love it. But, you know, I think it's it's our mindset, right? It's, you know, mm -hmm. it's that moment when you say, like, this is not going to be me anymore. You know, and I told myself, you know, I'm not going to bounce another $100 check and I'm going to change my life. You know, and I came up with, I mean, people come up with uh, vision boards and statements, but I told myself, I'm going to be a millionaire. I am going to be a millionaire. And I said that to myself all the time. I had it typed out. I probably have it somewhere here in my office as well. The original piece of paper that I had it typed out. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be a millionaire. And it wasn't necessarily about the million dollars. It was just about having choice and not having to worry. You yep. know, like I could get thrown out. Like I didn't have a hundred bucks to pay for rent. So, you know, that's embarrassing. You know, I didn't even want to call my family. I don't think I did call my family. I don't even mm -hmm. think my mom actually knows that story you know, or my grandparents that, you know what I mean? Like it's that kind of a, a, a yeah. raw story that you just, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of bury it. Right. Yeah. But it, it's that point of just changing how you're going to, you know, function. And like I said, it, I think that's what really changed my trajectory in life. You know, that I was, I knew I owned that I was broke and I didn't want right. to be right. And what, okay. So owning was huge. Yes. What, what, what practical things from, from bounce check, yeah. Mind decision to millionaire. Yeah. And obviously you can't tell us everything, but what sort of practical things did you do that yeah, no, no. the audience can grab that I can grab? I haven't hit a million yet. And yeah. I definitely know I want to be a multi-millionaire, not just a yeah. millionaire. So so here's a couple of things that I would say, you know, that that we can all do. I hustled, right? So we can all yeah. wake up and make a choice. I've got a paycheck or I can get another paycheck, or you know what, there's Rodman Fields, or you know what, there's Juice Plus or or you know what, there's other ways, right? There's other ways to get extra income. So what yep. I did, you know, I got myself a full-time job, okay? Mm -hmm. I actually stopped going to school, which I probably wouldn't recommend to people, but- <laughs> but actually, a professor now, the you irony, know. you'll come back to that. But I was so, yeah, and I did come back to it. I did finish it and I do have my, you know, degrees. So I have both my degrees, I did finish them. And that's, you know, that's a longer story. But the short story is I was so broke, I went out and got a job, right? Mm -hmm. So I literally went from bouncing a $100 rent check to like, you know, I need to work now and I don't really have a choice about it. And so, and we do that, right? Yeah. When we need to make money, we just, we go do it. So that's what I did. I got a job. I worked my butt off and um, you know, I was making, I think it was like a salary of $24,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And I was working like 90 hours a week. I was working oh insane, God. insane yeah. hours to just, yeah. you know, because I needed the job so bad and I wanted to yeah. show up and I wanted to, you know, anyways, I put all my effort into it. Mm -hmm. But from there, you know, I then got a job at a bank. So this is kind of an interesting story. I won't take up too much time with the story, but I think it's fascinating. I got a job at a bank and I went to the bank because I had decided doing my MBA. I'd done some research that I told myself, you're not smart enough, Sarah, to make a product or come up with another company, but you work hard enough that you could invest in real estate. Okay. And so I, I studied my way to, I studied my way to my wealth but I also took mm. action. So what mm. happened was I came up with a business plan that I have sitting over here, okay, from 2002. So I had a business plan on how I could build my income and build my wealth. So I got a job at a bank. Wait, wait, yep. okay. that business plan was a life plan or was it on a business? So it was, I, I guess I'd kind of say it was both, right? I mean, it was okay. a business plan on investing in real estate but okay. I had it carried out for like 20 or 30 years. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, 
which is, you know, an interesting way of basically goal setting, right? Yeah. I was forced to do goal setting in a business plan, but that's, you know, I had it staged out, you know, my five-year plan, my 10-year plan, my 20-year plan. Mm -hmm. So the business plan uh, helped get me going. But what happened, you know, I got a job at a bank. So I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a rental property so that I can start making more money. Because I thought I will never be wealthy. Basically, like what I told my my kids, my son, when he's looking at mega yachts, you know, you can be wealthy or you can, you know, build your wealth, but you can't do it just on the hamster wheel. You know, no. the money that we earn day to day, that's our food money. That's our shelter money. Right. How do we really build our wealth? We have to do it through a business or other investments so that, right. like you said, money making money, right? This is a yep. whole plan so that the money is coming into us, right? Instead of our money always going out. Mm -hmm. And so when I worked at the bank, I actually went to the bank, you know, sat down, said, here's my income, here's everything. And she said, uh, I'm really sorry, Sarah, but you don't make enough money to qualify for a mortgage. And it was like that $100 bounce check coming back. And I was like, Ooh. what? Like I, I work at this bank, you know, I have an MBA, a little bit right. of ego there, right? But oh, in my yeah. mind, I was thinking that I wasn't saying it out loud, but I thought, how could I not get a mortgage, right? Right. And so what did I do? Because again, I was in that situation of not having enough money, even though I had a good job. So I right. went and got another job. So right. while I was commuting, and this is just, this is stuff that we can all do, right? We have Absolutely. a good job, you get a night job, you know, and then you get another job. So what happened over a short period of time in the next, it took me about a year, year and a half to build up enough income. I went back and said, you know, here it is. You said, I need to make more money. I made more money. So I qualified for my first property, which was a duplex. So that, that was the first house I bought. I didn't buy a house to live in. Okay. I was right. still renting. I bought a house to rent it out to tenants so I could start building my income. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And so I had my full-time job, I had a part-time job, and then I had a duplex with two more checks coming on that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, for all of us looking to build, it's like, look at where you, I think, you know, where am I right now? You know, what mm -hmm. do I have? And then where can I make, where can I have the side hustle? Right. 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 You know, it's just basically, you know, and you can now I'm still probably, I would say, you know, in some ways I'm still hustling, but it's in a more um, by choice, by choice, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and lifestyle than than necessity or by needing. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Did I give you enough quick tips there, Marquis, or is that too? Uh, no, I, I love it. I love it. So now let's do something a little different. Sure. Let's first of all dive deeper. I never do this on a show. Never. Okay. We talked about. It. Let's so do it. If you have questions for Sarah, drop them in the chat. We will attempt to get to them. She still has other things she wants to talk about and questions I want to ask around her career and then how, cause I have some real estate people watching now who want to understand how you expanded your portfolio. How did you, those sorts of things. And so you go for it. If we get some interesting questions, if we get time to get to it, I'll pull them up. Love or maybe we can answer them in the chat later. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Please ask questions. I mean, that's what I'm here for. If I, if I can help anybody along the way, or you're thinking about something or you're not sure. I mean, I think I read 200 books on real estate investing before I actually did it. You know, before somebody said to me, Sarah, like, are you going to do it or not? You know, and I was almost in that analysis paralysis, right? You start learning things, learning things, and then you just, you kind of, you just talk yourself out of it. But if I didn't, you know, take action, you know, that duplex, we then bought another triplex, we then bought another duplex, we bought another duplex, you know, Anyways, now, now we're down to basically we have a bunch of apartment buildings and we bought this, you know, Airbnb with our kids. And, you know, so we have a few other smaller little things on the go because, again, we're adjusting with what the opportunity is. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's that's what it's grown to. And that's literally it hasn't even been 20 years. Right. I, I know. I caught that. I heard 2002 and I was like, that's less than 20 years. I know. The first duplex I bought was. Uh, December in 2003. And in fact, like of interest, which people might be going through now, um, you know, it wasn't always smooth sailing for us, like for my spouse sure. and I. So in, remember the, um, the global financial crisis, 2008, 2009, remember mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. and my spouse got laid off. <laughs> oh. so, and we had sold all of our rental properties, right? We bought a house on the lake. We bought a boat. We had like a, a hard top convertible, like, yeah. you know, and then my spouse got laid off and I was like, ah, yeah. Why did they sell all the properties? Like that was the whole point of having a backup plan. Right. So in uh, 2009, 
we bought another property that we eventually sold and made $500,000 from. And then in 2011, we bought our first apartment building with only $200 cash. What? Yeah. Only $200 cash because we had to buy the shares. So anyhow, that's like probably a whole other story. And, and that's why I was also um, writing some articles for Canadian Real Estate Wealth to explain how that worked. But, you know, it was, again, that that point of, okay, I did something. We made our lives better. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody gets laid off. Uh, you know, yeah. it goes down to half. Yeah. And so how do we reset? And I'm like, I got to get back into real estate, right? We got to do this. And yep. then not, you know, not be selling out. And so anyways, now we have a bunch of apartment buildings and we've grown that literally in less than 10 years. So we basically had like nothing and then rebuilt it back up. So you, you got to start somewhere. Don't think yeah. that, don't think that I was in a different position than whoever, you know, wherever yeah. you're at that's listening. Right. I mean, it makes your story that much more doable. It's like relatable. An average person can go, wait a minute. She lost everything and then had to do it again inside of 10 years. And she did it. And I did it, it bigger. It's like, you know, it's almost like you hear everybody say, you know, I, I basically was starting back from zero and then, you know, it was yeah. bigger, right? What's because up? we had some experience, we built it out. And so then all of a sudden we, you know, it kind of mushroomed, right? Mushroomed. Right. So that $200 in fact turned into two apartment buildings. Yeah. But again, that's like, that's wow. like, a, well, that's a class for another day. <laughs> How to that, do it. That's to, a phone call I'm going to make after I read the yeah. article to talk to you about so that I can do that over here in yeah. Chicago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, quick, quick question in the chat. Tanji wants to know. It's it's it's, it's three questions, but. OK. So what would you recommend an 11 year old invest in? What's a good amount to start with and what's a good book to start with? You know, I think it's like some of the concepts, right? So um, are you saying a book for the, the parent or for the 11 year old? I'm going to assume it's for the 11 year old. Okay. So I'm going to do something like, I'm not, I'm not going to give you a book, but okay. I, I'm going to make a recommendation, which you probably already know. I'm telling you Monopoly, just the game of Monopoly. It, that is like the best thing you can get your kids playing and understanding. That is literally real life. It, and honestly, when I was a kid, I played Monopoly by myself because my brother kept losing. And he wouldn't play with me anymore. <laughs> and then I became all those things, right? I became the banker. I became the landlord. You know, I became the mortgage broker. You know, like I became all of these things. Yeah. What you can learn just playing that game with your kids, that, like, if you did that on a Friday night every week or, or whatever your night is, you have a game sure. night or something together, that can start to, to transform their mindset on how things work. You know, um, so, so I would say don't even worry about a book, but that but that puts it in action. Right. right. So we, That's we, read a book, big difference. we read a book and then we're like, great ideas. What do, yeah. we, do? we put it down and we go on to the next book. Right. Unless we yes. really. So I think if you have Monopoly, it puts it's putting money in their hands. It's giving them experience. They're negotiating like, hey, can I trade you New York Avenue for, <laughs> for whatever, Illinois Avenue. Right. right. So it's putting them in action. So they are starting to plant the seed on how do I do real estate? You know, if real estate, if it makes sense. Right. And I yeah. think we start, you know, looking at how do I uh, get my kids to invest, you know, have the conversation with them, you know, figure out a way. So I let my kids the way that they invest, even though it's in money bags, you know, as it grows more, we tie it back into our companies because our company, you set up a business, you, they can lend money to the company and they can get paid interest. There's nothing wrong with that. It's legal. Yeah. You claim the interest, no problem, right? And you're claiming the write-off. Like this is how businesses work. And again, I'm coming from Canada. Talk to your accountant or lawyer or whatever. Yeah. Right? I'm not an accountant. But, um, you know, we've structured this in a way. We planned it with our accountants so that we can actually, yeah, take their money, pay them interest. And it's a legit income for them and write-off yeah. for us. And you know what? Their bank accounts build. And as they build more... I'm hoping they're going to want to buy another Airbnb, like another legal duplex, right? And as they build that out, imagine if they're 20 and they already own, this is my vision, three duplexes, right? Yeah. Like, why not? There's no reason why they can't. Mm -hmm. You know, the same thing in my business, if you have access to a business, you know, I pay them from my, you know, real estate company to do work for me. You know, even right. somebody who's like going to get the mail because that saves me time, right? They got to go to a mailbox, get the mail and bring it back. So whatever those that job list is, right? Then you can start to pay them. Again, write it off if you have a business. 
um, you know, and, or talk to your accountant about how you can set it up. I think there's great ways that you can even run a, a sideline hustle to create a business, yeah. generate some income, and then pay them from that. You know, why yeah. not? Like if, for example, Roden and Fields or, or whatever, right? I think yeah. lots of opportunities out there. When I was young, I sold Cutco knives. Like that was my first introduction into the business yeah. world, you know, yeah. like call people yeah. up, you know, hi, you know, I got your name from so-and-so. They said he'd help me out. And then it, literally it's old school. You'd go to people's houses. I'd have mm -hmm. this knife set. I'd pull it yeah. out. I'd show them how all the knives work and cut the tomatoes. And then yeah. I'd tell them like a thousand dollar knife set, you know, by the time I was, you know, ramped up to whatever percentage, you know, you're making a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, 300 right. bucks, 400 bucks, 500 bucks a set. That's a lot of money. Right. Mm -hmm. Anyways. I don't. No, I love it. My my son was. We were talking about this the other day. How he said he sold cut coal knives. Yeah, for, for I love it. <laughs> yeah. And so being, I think the one of the main things I got is just being active in it. Yes. Being active in it. And the one question I have, I I believe the answer. I I answered it just now, but I still want to ask it. Sure. I was really surprised. I, actually, I was really impressed that you read two hundred books on real estate before you started. Yeah. I don't know if what do you think? Marquise, but <laughs> what's that? For, I said, I don't know if I'd be impressed, but you know, I think, I think for me, what you can understand is that it stalled me out, right? I was stalling okay. myself out. Okay. I probably only needed to read one or two books and I should have okay. done it, but I literally, I kept, and I wasn't buying the books. I was going to, you know, chapters or Indigo or like Barnes and Noble sitting in the back, like, you know, sometimes yeah. having a coffee if I had enough money for that or not. And literally sitting back there and like, I would read a couple of books every time I went in there, different books, yes. I'm like, oh, a different book or I travel, I go to Florida. I'm like, oh, they have a real estate section. I go down there, yeah. <laughs> Look, read the real estate book. So, um, you know, in some ways I was just holding myself back. You know, I knew I could make money in real estate because mm -hmm. most of the world's millionaires, they have some kind of real, real estate, estate power, right? Yeah. Okay. So I know it's a sure thing. The second thing, you read a couple of books, you've already got it figured out. And at the end of the day, there's learning, right? Mm -hmm. Every situation is going to be a little bit different. So as long as you find somebody that, you know, uh, is an expert, that's, I mean, that's how my own real estate business has grown. Right. People, I didn't do it to help other people and build a business and as a realtor. I did it for our own investments. But what happens right. is people see that I'm successful and then yep. they call me and say, hey, you know, I know that you're done really well with your investments. Could you help us? And yeah. of course I want to help people. And so yeah. that's really what built this whole other, like being a realtor was my side hustle. You know, now it's like my main gig, even though I'm a full-time professor, you know, I'm still helping mm -hmm. students. I want to inspire them and empower them. Right. But, you know, it's kind of had this shift occur, right? So yeah. anyhow, I think, you know, I think to answer the question about uh, your 11 year old son again, you know, play that game of monopoly and start talking about what the possibilities are. You know, when we start planting that seed of possibility uh, and choice around it, you know, then you start to see them make different choices and, and also feel empowered about their own future based on their own decisions. Right. It's not like, yes. Oh, I'm stuck in this job or I'm, right. I'm stuck with only this amount of money for my life. Right. No, like anything is possible, right? Like anything is possible. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really, um, you know, I'd encourage you uh, with your 11 year old or your kids out there to, to really share with them, you know, and then show them what the path is. So anyhow. that's really cool. All right. So as we start winding down, yeah. how can people not just like follow you? Like that's important, but like, I know you, you still coach, right? Yeah, I do do um, real estate coaching. I've run real estate labs online. You know, I'll be setting up another one uh, for later this spring. So if people are interested in that, um, you know, they can always shoot me an email and just say, hey, you know, I saw you on the show. Um, you know, I'm interested in the class, that kind of thing. And then I can send them some more information. So, you know, that's always out there. Um, but, you know, the last class I ran, uh, I had students from Canada and also the U.S., which is nice because then it allows me to help people, not just in my geographic area, right. you know, but it allows me to help people on a broader scale, which I really appreciate, right? I, I want to help more people. And so, right. if I get, you know, access to a larger audience and that really, you know, helps me help them. So that's kind of, that's what I, that's my focus now, right? Helping more yeah. people, you know, build their, so their wealth. What can they expect in being in one of your workshops or your, or your coaching sessions? So they can expect to, you know, kind of review where they're at, you know, mindset is a key part. And I know that that doesn't really get uh, addressed in a lot of areas, but we go over mindset, right. To really prepare you for it's huge, right. It's huge in lots of ways because you're also uh, going from the mindset. Even when I grew up, you know, you want to buy a house, pay down the mortgage. And now we're telling you, 
what you really want to do is have, you know, have mortgages on properties and that that is good debt. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a shift of, you know, where you're spending your money. Like, for example, I just went and got a bank draft today for, uh, you know, $40,000 to put down on a property mm -hmm. instead of going out and buying a, you know, an Audi or whatever, right? Like yeah. going and spending my money on something different. So, you know, I think that that's that mindset shift, but it's like, if you can delay that gratification and start to learn how to do that, then all of a sudden, you know, that snowball effect of money, you know, the money is coming into you instead of the money just going out. So it really transforms that. So yeah, yeah mindset. And then the nuts and bolts of really investing, like, what am I looking for? Like, what kind of, you know, what kind of things should I be paying attention to when I'm, you know, stay, you know, I just tell people like when you're standing on the street, look for these things, look, you know, right. little things like that or other ways to, to build money with a property. So it's a lot more specific as well. And then I've had other students come on that have an investment properties already. And then we analyze it and look for um, opportunities based on their own investments. You know, I had somebody that wanted That's to, cool. you know, change their jobs. And I said like, you have enough money. And they said, no, I don't. I said, you do. Let's, let's look at this. And they realized all of a sudden on the call with the class, wow, oh, this could really change things for me. Now, I do have money to hire a property manager. I can mm -hmm. free up some of my time so I can then, you know, look at more investments. So right. it's a matter of looking at what you've got and then also where the opportunity is to either transform what you have or also build your portfolio, which is a key, key piece as well. So anyways, we talk about lots of things like that. Yeah. That's so cool. You might find me in one of your classes. I, I literally... I'm intrigued. I've, I've been studying stocks lately and playing like so I'm I'm reading and and doing right. I'm doing both like let's yeah, go, sure. you know, because I I. I I probably wouldn't sit and read 200 books, but if right. it, what I was told I probably should do, I'd try and get 50 in. <laughs> but I love that you're like, no, really, you know, a couple good ones and, and being in it is where you learn the most. And that's pretty much how I operate anyway, being in it. I mean, something happened one of my one of my lines yesterday. And I was like, hey, what happened? And I was talking to a buddy on Instagram this morning. It's like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, aha. OK, I know what to do next time around. <laughs> so it was, it was yeah, it, it's just being in the game, playing Monopoly yep. being in the game. And something else that really clicked for me when you talked about Monopoly was allowing them to broker, but also saying no sometimes. So that they, like, well, you're my mom, you're my dad. Why would you say no? Because I don't think that's a good enough deal. Exactly. But them to think and then come back around with something else the next time and go, well, yeah, I'll do that. So, yeah. It's teaching them, right? It's just, right. it's practice. It's just like, you know, for any sports, we always practice before we go to the game, right? So yeah. why would they go into the game of, you know, of real life, you know, buy their first house and they don't really know anything about it, you know, right. or negotiations. I mean, you're right. They, they start to get the sense of, okay, well, what if I pay this much money or what if I give you this property? You know, and what if you run out sometimes? Well, that happens. Okay, maybe I stretch myself too thin. <laughs> right? So yeah. yes, lots of learning there. That's awesome. So the last question I have for you that for someone who may not know any about real estate, which I'm not that big in terms of knowing a lot about it, I'm looking at. It. I got peers who are like, we got you, let's go. Um, there's so many opportunities to be involved in real estate. Yeah. For someone who is starting to look at investing in real estate in terms of difficulty and learning, in terms of growth possibility, I know it's going to come down to the individual, but what area would you suggest someone brand new looking at trying to get into it, consider trying first, flipping all that stuff? Like, what would you consider? Yeah. Like, for example, when I started out, we just uh, finished the basement. We rented the basement out. You know, as simple as that, right? As simple as that. Yeah. As simple as that. You know, and that, and wow. I was actually renting. It was my spouse that owned that. We weren't married back then, right? We're just dating, yeah. but living yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I was actually paying rent. And so, but I said, you know, I'll help you because if you can pay down your student debt, then that's good for both of us because sure. we had a future together, which, you know, thankfully we did, right? Yes. yes. And uh, yeah, so we finished the basement. And then had a tenant move in, pay four hundred dollars a month, and that was That's so. One. The so it doesn't have to be complex, right? It doesn't no. have to be difficult. It could be like renting out a room or Airbnb yeah. your place when you know you're going yeah. away for the weekend, or I, you know, like yeah. I think there's very easy steps that you can take to yeah. just, just yeah. you know. But then I think it's also not giving up, right? There's always going to yeah. be 
you know, a challenging something and, and lots of people will try and scare you off. I remember family sitting around telling me, don't do it. Tenants are, you know, terrible. Yeah. And, and yeah. honestly, you know, I think we've had yeah. maybe two bad tenants in like almost yeah. 20 years. Like it's not, you know what I mean? It's just, mm -hmm. and stuff happens, you fix it, right? Find a solution. So yeah, I would say just start. I think that that's part of yeah. it, you know, get connected with somebody that knows, you know, has experience, has some exposure to it, has some insight because that helps you. Right. So that's yeah. why I say the book is good, but if you can get a person on your side that, you know, has that experience and then jump in with them, right. And just yeah. allow them to kind of coach you along the way. That's, that's the best way to do it. Right. Instead of yeah. sitting and reading the 200 books. Yeah. That's <laughs> so funny. I have a friend right now who I love so dearly. Um, she started, she, she came to the U S pregnant, no job, didn't speak the language, taught herself English. She started by renting out her basement, now owns at least a couple of different properties in a couple of different places and some other things like her expansion possibilities and things she's touching now. I just sit back like, Ooh, that's brilliant. So when you said rent out the basement, I was like, ah, you're right. It's that yeah. simple. It it's starts simple. Like, start somewhere, you know, start somewhere, right. And do something. Or if you, you know, if the bank won't qualify you for something, then just get a side hustle, you know, like just, just find a way to add some extra income and then yeah. know that you're saving that income for the down payment on the property. Because, you know, as you have two tenants, you have two more checks coming in. As you have 20 right. tenants, you have 20 checks. You know, I couldn't yeah. believe it the day when I realized that I'm, you know, the money coming in was more for my rental properties than all of the, and remember I'm top 4% in Canada all of the money I make in real estate, as well as my professor job, the rental income exceeds that. Okay. So that's, that's, so cool. it's like a, that's mind blowing when yeah. you can have that it much is. cash coming in, you know, it more is. than what you're working. Right. So that's so cool. And, and you can do it by starting with your basement. It's not start with your basement. Yeah. I love it. I mean, you can, yeah. one of the things I've even looked at is you can Airbnb a room in your house. Yep. You total absolutely. Like that's a thing. That's a thing. That's a thing. In fact, we had a, a friend, he was living in San Francisco and he was, I said, how much are you paying for rent? He said, well, I'm paying, he was paying something like $3,000 a month for a one bedroom. And his girlfriend was paying some, the same kind of amount, 3000. Yeah. I said, well, why don't you guys move in together? And he said, yeah. So then we'll, we're going to find a place that's nicer and we'll only pay 3,600 a month. I said, but how much would it really cost you to get a two bedroom or a three bedroom? So I said, do the research and call me back. So he did the research and he was like, it would cost about 4,000 or 4,500. So I said, okay, so you guys are going to live in the same room, right? And he's like, yep. I said, so rent the place for 4,500. I said, it's only, you know, when you look at you were paying six, right. 4,500, you're still saving $1,500 a month. Plus you have two more bedrooms that you can rent out. And he's like, what? I'm like, exactly. And then use all that extra cash, save yep. it, have enough. Yep. Then you can buy a house in yes. a year from now. See, they have good jobs, whatever. Buy a house and then do the same thing. Like live in the basement and rent out the upstairs, whatever. And he's like, Oh my gosh, I never thought I'd be able to buy a house. And I'm like, that's just do it. Like just, you know, follow that system anyway. So there's that's always cool. a way. There's always a way. Remember, I started off like from zero, like I bounced a hundred dollar check. So, you know, it's possible for anyone to yeah. do it. It's possible for I, anyone to be successful. I knew we were connected. You're See? just an amazing soul. And I love the practicalness and the 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 liberty in which you share truth and possibility with people. Yeah. Like that's huge. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kaz has taught me this honors to God and you. And I appreciate that so much. Can you hang out in the green room for just a second? I want to say, of course. Back. All right. One Absolutely. Second. Thank you. Thank you. What to say, what to say. You wonder why I do road in and fields. It's a side hustle. And I look good in the process, but are you going to run out your basement now? Are you getting ready to have your children invest in your business and then you have them take a loan and then pay interest back to them? What are you, what are you going to do? Sarah gave us so many things that are simple that we can all do on some level or another. Today's Thriving Thursdays. You have been left without excuses to thrive in your life. I'm Marquise Martin Hayes. It's been my pleasure being your host. See you next week.